Okay, I'm going to try to go through lesson 3.3, and that's the common ions and common ion effect. So we're starting off with the idea about calcium hydroxide, just picking that one. And calcium hydroxide, you know, is something that does not dissolve well. It is on our list of, you know, relatively uh, soluble hydroxides, but it doesn't dissolve well. So if you put some uh, calcium ions into some sodium hydroxide, you are going to get a precipitate like we can see over here. So if we had a solution that was calcium hydroxide, then we could get some solid, not too hard, and but some of it is going to dissolve and we'll have a significant amount of calcium ions and hydroxide ions. So now back to our ideas of Le Chatelier. If we were to add some sodium hydroxide, then the question is, what is the stress? And if you look at this, some people get a little confused here and you say, well, there's sodium. Should I go back and put sodium in my equation somewhere? And the answer is no. What you want to do when you get these kind of problems is concentrate on the chemicals that are in the equilibrium. And so, you know, a lot of times it's if there's a KSP given for calcium hydroxide, that means there's where you need to put your focus on the calcium ions, the hydroxide ions. So we don't really care about the sodium. It's the fact that we're adding hydroxide. So you say, well, the stress is there's too much hydroxide. It's going to shift this direction. The uh, calcium ion concentration is going to go down. The, the hydroxide ion concentration will go up because we're adding it. And the calcium hydroxide, you know, we say, well, are we going to make more of it? Yes, we will. Does its concentration change? Uh, no, it won't because you can't change the concentration of a solid. But what we care about is what's going to happen to its solubility. And if we're saying that this reaction is going this way, well, what that means is that there are fewer ions in solution. We're making more solid, so we're going to lower the solubility. And that's the point of this, that, you know, the sodium hydroxide we're adding and the calcium hydroxide in our equilibrium, they have hydroxide in common. So when we add that, it shifts our equilibrium to the left and it lowers our solubility. And that's the idea. Now, in kind of the same similar way, if I say I'm going to add some HCl, well, which of these two ions do we care about? Neither one is in our equilibrium. So we, we certainly do not want to change our equilibrium and start adding in H's or CL's. But we say, well, which of these ions will affect anything? How about chloride? Does chloride affect the calcium? No, because calcium chloride is a soluble compound because we know our solubility rules. Uh, how about hydrogen and, wa and oxygen, hydroxide? And yes, that's going to turn into water. So we would have a side reaction here where water is formed, but what we're really saying is that's going to remove our hydroxides. So the stress is there's not going to be enough hydroxide. The reaction is going to shift to the right to make that up. The calcium ion concentration goes up. The uh, calcium hydroxide concentration stays the same because you can't change the concentration of a solid, but the amount of solid would go down. But again, what we care about is what happens to the solubility. Okay, and it's going to increase the solubility of our calcium hydroxide. And as a general rule, if there's anything that is going to remove one of these ions, that's going to increase the solubility, drive it forward. Anything that adds these ions is going to decrease the solubility, drive it to the left. That's the big idea. So now let's go back here a little bit and say, okay, example one. If we had a solution, okay, here's where we're back to the same equilibrium, and we're given the KSP way over here, and we say, well, what's going to happen? What is the molar solubility? Now, we've done this already, molar solubility. So we're going to define this concept of S, the solubility. Um, that's how much is going to go into solution. So for calcium, this must be, I must be making S. So at equilibrium, I'll have S amount of that. Since it's OH taken twice, we're going to make 2S of hydroxides, and so at equilibrium, I'll have 2S. So when we go over here, we're going to substitute S. We're going to substitute 2S squared. And so we can figure out, well, if the KSP is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6, then I can use my equation that KSP equals 4S cubed, and we can calculate the solubility. So all I have to do is take 1.3, uh, times 10 to the minus 6, I'm going to divide by 4, and I'm going to take the cube root. So my solubility is the cube root.
of 1.3 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by 4, and that equals, I get 6.875 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, and I would probably report that as 6.9 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. So that's my solubility. Okay, but what's going to happen if we try to do the same thing, but this time we do it not in water, but we do it in a solution that contains sodium hydroxide. Okay, so now we kind of go back to our original idea. So here we say, if I have some hydroxides in my solution, okay, well then that's going to drive the reaction back a little bit and reduce my solubility. Okay, that's the common ion effect. But then we're just going to do the problem. And the way to do the problem, first off, it says write the equation for this. Okay, it's the same thing we've done before. So calcium ion, I'm sorry, that's not right. Calcium hydroxide solid is turning into calcium ions and two hydroxide ions. Okay, and if I'm going to do my ice box for that, well, the same thing. So this is solubility minus solubility zero. So that's just, you know, defining that variable. This time here, okay, the calcium and the hydroxide, we have zero calcium like we've done before, but now we have 0.15 molar hydroxide. Because my sodium hydroxide, I don't care about the sodium, I only care about the hydroxide. So the difference now is I have an initial value of hydroxide. Calcium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide have hydroxide ion in common, and we call that the common ion effect. So it's going to reduce my solubility a little bit. Okay, now after this is just a math problem. So we're going to say uh, this guy is S, and this is going to be 2S. I should get my equation back here so you can see why. And this will be uh, S I have here, but this is going to be 0.15 plus 2S. Now I'm going to give myself some more room down here. And so I'm going to say my KSP expression is the concentration of calcium times the concentration of hydroxide squared. And I'm going to substitute in S. And I'm going to substitute in 0.15 plus 2S quantity squared. Now, the KSP, that whole value, I'll have to go back and look, that was uh, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 6. 1.3 times 10 to the negative 6. Now, for some of you, you can go ahead and solve this using your big calculators. Okay, but we are going to go back and say, you know what? This is not a very soluble substance in the first place. And if I have this ion in common, that's going to actually drive my equilibrium back. So my solubility is going to be even smaller. So we're going to make the assumption. Okay, assume that uh, 2S is much smaller than 0.15 molar. Therefore, the uh, expression 0.15 plus 2S is going to be about the same as 0.15. And what that's going to do for us, then, is to re make our uh, equation much simpler to solve. S times 0.15 squared is equal to 1.3 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, and now I'm just going to solve for S. So S, my solubility, is 1.3 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by 0.15 squared, which equals... I get 5.777, I'm going to say 5.8 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5 molar. And this is not, oops, this is not surprising because we're going to say, okay, my solubility should be lower than it was before. Solubility before was 6.9 times 10 to the negative 3. 6.9 times 10 to the negative 3. Now this is 5.8 times 10 to the minus 5, much smaller, which is not surprising because with that sodium hydroxide, a hydroxide ion in common, it shifts my equilibrium back toward the solid, which means it reduces my solubility. So again, for this calculation, the only real difference is we have a value here on the initial line for one of the ions. And then we have to do our assumption, our simplifying assumption, so we can calculate that value. Okay, example three.
Same thing, okay, what's the solubility of lead chloride in 0.1 molar NaCl? We're given the KSP, and calculate the solubility of lead chloride in pure water, uh, compare, and we're going to compare those two solubilities. So go ahead and pause this here, I will write it out, and then you can check and see if you got the same answer I did. Okay, here comes the answer. Now, doing this quickly, okay, I did the second one first. Here's my full equation, and I know I'm going to get S, and I'm going to get 2S, substituted in my KSP expression, and I figure out that solubility is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 2 in pure water. Now, here, when I have a 0.1 molar NaCl solution, then I'm still using the same equation, but I'm going to have S, so start with 0, of my lead, but 0.1 molar um, Cl minus from my NaCl. So at equilibrium, I'm going to have 0.1 plus 2s. And when I do my uh, equation, I'm going to square that, you know, when I uh, square this term. And I'm going to do my assumption, like we did before, that 2s is much smaller than 0.1. And when I get all done, I get a solubility, in this case, of 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. So it's going to be less soluble in the, uh, so lead chloride will be less soluble in a solution of sodium chloride than it would be in pure water, which is no big surprise. Okay, example four, different idea. And this is, you know, some of these salts turn out to be more soluble in an acidic solution. And the idea is, let's say we have a AGCL. So if we have AGCL, we have AGCL solid, and then that breaks up to be AG+. Plus and Cl minus. If I could do something that would remove my chloride ion, that would shift it to the right, increase my solubility. So what if I add H plus? Okay, so I make an acidic solution. Well, will the H's go with the Cl's? Okay, and if the HCl was a weak acid, and what that means is that it only breaks up a little bit to get H plus and Cl minus, and that would essentially mean the other direction, okay, would happen. In other words, the H's would reduce the chlorides in there. But that's not the case for this, okay? So which of the following would be uh, more soluble, not AgCl, because Cl comes from a strong acid, okay? Let's take the example of barium fluoride, okay? So barium fluoride is a solid, okay, it breaks up into barium ions and two F minus ions. Okay, well HF is definitely a weak acid. That means if HF, you know, barely breaks up into H plus and Cl minus, I'm sorry, F minus, unlike this one, if we hit here, what, you know, I didn't write this, I mean, we were saying, assuming maybe it's a weak acid, but no, HCl is strong, which means it completely breaks up into H plus and Cl, which means the H's and the Cl have absolutely no tendency to stick together. But here, we say it barely breaks up, which means it has a great tendency to go together, and that's important. So if there's H's and F's in the same solution, H pluses and F minuses, then they are actually going to reform that HF, and if I can remove these F minuses from solution by turning them into HFs, then that is going to drive my reaction forward and increase my solubility. So which of the following salts would be more soluble? Well, certainly the BAF would be more soluble because the F comes from the weak acid HF. Okay, calcium phosphate would be because uh, phosphate comes from the weak acid H3PO4. Okay, the magnesium hydroxide, because you'd say it comes from water, which is an incredibly weak acid. And carbonate comes from the weak acid H2CO3. So those four would be uh, elements, substances that would dissolve better in an acidic solution if their negative ion comes from uh, weak acid. Now the ones that would not, okay, lead iodide because HI is strong, AGCL because CL, HCL is strong. So that's the idea. Look at the negative ion, see if it came from a uh, weak acid. If it did, this change, you know, where the uh, ions turn back into the weak acid would drive that uh, solubility forward. It would make something more soluble. And the last thing here, let's say we had a situation where we had a solution that had maybe calcium ions and 
uh, lead ions in the same solution. Now this is actually not a picture, correct, appropriate picture, but it's, I think it's a good visual. And the idea is if we were to start adding some sodium sulfate, and again, we don't care about the sodium, that's not going to precipitate, but the fact that it would have sulfate ions, well, there's calcium sulfate, and there's lead sulfate, and both of those have relatively low solubilities. In fact, they have KSPs, and the KSPs are given. So the calcium sulfate is 6.1 times 10 to the negative 5, and the uh, 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 lead sulfate is 1.3 times 10 to the negative uh, 8. Okay, and I'm just taking this from the problem. So the first question is, if I were to start adding sulfate, they're not both going to just, they're not both going to precipitate. One's going to precipitate before the other, and is whichever one is less soluble, whichever one has a smaller KSP. And if you look at your numbers, that is definitely a small KSP. Okay, this is not a huge KSP, but it's bigger than uh, 10 to minus 8 is larger than 10 to minus 5. So the lead sulfate is the ion that would dissolve, that would uh, precipitate first. So that's the first question. Then the second question says, what is the concentration of the first ion, we're talking about lead, that precipitates when the second salt begins to precipitate? And they go, okay, well that is an annoying question and it's out of our textbook. Okay, but we can do it. So we say, let's look at calcium sulfate. So we know what goes on with calcium sulfate. Calcium sulfate breaks up to calcium and sulfate. And so therefore the KSP of calcium sulfate is simply the calcium ion concentration times the sulfate ion concentration. And we know that together those uh, multiply together to be 6.1 times 10 to the negative 5. Well, how do we deal with this? In the problem, it is saying that these calcium and, and lead are both 0 0.01. So that means we know that calcium is 0 0.010 molar. So if we know that's calcium, and we know that, I mean, we know that, that we know that number, and we know 6.1 times 10 to the minus 5 for this number, then we should be able to figure out the sulfate concentration. It's just a simple arithmetical process. And we'll go through and say, okay, x must be, we're going to divide by 0 0.01, so x is going to be 6.1 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. Okay, that's a useful number. That is not our answer, however, because that's just saying what's the sulfate concentration. Well, the lead sulfate, you know, has been precipitating all this while. And we're saying this is when, when the um, sulfate concentration gets to be 6.1 times 10 to minus 3, that's when our uh, calcium is going to start to uh, precipitate. Okay, so at that point, what is the lead going to be? So just like we did here, let's change colors. The KSP for our lead sulfate, so Pb2 plus times sulfate, SO4 2 minus, equals uh, 1.3 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, we're given that information. And we're not going to fill in the lead this time. That's what we're looking for because it is no longer 0 0.01 because it's been precipitating. But we do know our sulfate concentration. So this value is 6.1 times 10 to the minus 3. And we know that it equals 1.3 times 10 to the minus 8 because that is a constant. So we want to find the lead ion concentration. So all we have to do is solve. So x equals 1.3 times 10 to the negative 8 molar divided by 6.1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And that equals... I get an answer of 2.13, so let's say 2.1 times 10 to the negative, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10 to the negative 6. And that's my concentration of the other ion, which in this case is lead. And that's just manipulating our KSP expressions. So since we had two different ions, we have two different expressions to deal with, but we're able to figure out the answer. And that is lesson 3.3.